Hi again, everyone. Uh, Eric here again, and we're going to look at some Minecraft education uh, tools and resources. In our last video, we covered classroom mode, which for uh, a lot of our teachers was a really great way to manage what was going on inside their world. Uh, but I polled our audience, and it turns out a lot of them wanted to see more about those tools that can still manage it, but from within the world. So rather than the classroom mode, using things like allow blocks, deny blocks, uh, border blocks, uh, and even command blocks to manage what's going on inside their world. So we're going to take a look at some of those things really quickly today. So uh, I'm going to go ahead in my Minecraft education game and create a new world just to kind of play around with some of these things. And I recommend you do the same thing. Create a flat world, create something simple, put yourself in creative mode, and just play to see how some of these things work. So we're going to create a new world. I'm going to call this one world builder just because we're going to be playing in world builder mode and you'll see what i mean by world builder mode in just a little while so we'll call it world builder mode we're going to switch this to creative just because we want to be able to build i'm going to keep it on peaceful not that there's anyone or anything in here that's going to hurt me uh we're going to switch infinite to flat just to make it simple and easy to find places to test some of these things out i want to see my coordinates uh, just so I can remember where I built some of these things in the world and work with them. Uh, I'm going to switch on always day so it's easy to see what we're building. There we go. Turning on those classroom settings and turning on that perfect weather also. Uh, we're not going to turn on a mutable world for now, but I am going to come back and turn it on in a little bit uh, when we do test one block just to show you how you can use immutable world settings uh, with some of the blocks. By the way, hi, Rebecca. You're going to see Rebecca popping in and out behind me the whole time. I'm just going to accept the fact that she's there. She'll wave at you every once in a while, probably make faces behind me. But that's okay. So we're going to go ahead and play this world. And we're going to wait for that to load up. So we are in our world. And right now, keep in mind that as a teacher who has joined this world, and because I've created this world, I am the operator of this world, which means I can use things um, like commands. Uh, we covered commands in some of our trainings and tutorials. Uh, if you need a refresher on what those are, if you just hit the slash on your keyboard, it will bring up that chat bar at the bottom. But this is where we can also enter chat commands. So chat commands can be anything like giving yourself an item, for example, or giving an item to another player. And notice that as I type, on the screen, we are seeing some examples of what those things can be. So for example, I can give something to all players. I can give something to my agent if I was using uh, the uh, coding platform. I could give something to all the entities. I can give something to the closest player. You can also give something to yourself. And I know my camera here is cutting that off from the screen, but for self, it is at S. So I'm giving something to myself. And then of course it starts giving me a list of the things I can put in next. What do I want to give to myself? So. In this instance, let's say I want to give myself an apple, right? So I've got my apple, I've got my command, and if I send this, an apple pops up in my inventory. I've given myself an apple. I could give other players in my world an apple. I could give all of my students an apple or whatever materials I want them to be building or working with. I can also use those commands, and we're gonna come back to this for a reason, to get rid of that apple. So for example, I could say clear and clear the inventory of my own inventory, for example but I can also clear the inventory of others. So that those commands are not limited to just myself if I am the operator, and I am the operator in this world right now. But we're gonna take a look at how to use those things with some of those other blocks. So we are gonna go into our inventory by hitting the E key on the keyboard, and here I am in the inventory, and we're gonna grab a few different blocks. And the ones I'm gonna grab are the allow block right there, we're going to delete that. The deny block. Here's our deny block. Our border block. And that looks like a fence, but red. And you'll see that one in just a little while. And that's all I'm going to grab for now. And we're going to close out our inventory. And we're going to talk about the difference between these things. But to do that, we're just going to build some examples of areas. So I'm going to dig a three by three size hole, just real small right here. And I'm gonna build another one right next to it. And I'm gonna build one more. Well, actually I only want the two for now. Now I'm gonna start with the allow and deny blocks. And I'm gonna go ahead and put an allow block uh, in 
this hole and just kind of fill this space, make a platform here of allow blocks. But you'll notice that when I try to do that, nothing is happening. I can't put this block down. I can't put it anywhere. And the reason for that is I need to put myself in world builder mode. Now I can only do that if I am the operator. And what is world builder mode? Well, it's a lot like what it sounds like. It gives me the power to build the world as I see fit. Uh, in other games, we might call this God mode, right? Because I basically the rules don't apply to me when I'm in that mode. To enter world builder mode, we're going to use that slash command again, and we're going to type WB for world builder. And when I enter that, you'll notice my world builder status has been updated to true, meaning that it is active. It is on. I am now in world builder mode. So now if I come back to this over here and I try to put that block down, it works. Now I need to be in world builder mode anytime I want to use allow blocks or the deny blocks. A little bit of a glitch there. So again, what I was saying was anytime I want to use the allow blocks or deny blocks, I have to be in world builder mode. Hi, chicken. Oop, wrong button. So these are my deny blocks. And I'm, the same thing is true of my border block. I can't use my border block unless I am in world builder mode. So you'll notice that world builder block acts like a fence, right? And I'm going to make this area just a little bit bigger. And you'll notice I'm building nice and slow. Normally I do this a lot faster uh, like that. I just uh, trying to be nice to all those people watching doing this for the first time. And we're going to make a nice, perfect square here with a space inside. Now, why would I use any of these? Well, to find that out, we're going to exit world builder mode by just doing the same slash command. And notice we're just toggling it on and off. So I'm doing slash WB again. And now my world builder status has been updated to false. So I'm no longer in world builder. And if I try to build with these things again, I can't do it. I'm going to go into my inventory. And I'm just going to grab a block of wood. Let's put that over here. Now, these are allow blocks. And you'll notice I have no problem building on top of them. Now, I cannot, when I'm not in world builder mode, so that includes my students, I can't break these. But I can build on top of them. These are my deny blocks. Notice that in my deny blocks, I can't build on them at all. Now, why would I want to use these two? Well, I'll give you an example. We're going to hit escape and I'm going to go into my settings. And I'm going to turn on that immutable world setting that I mentioned earlier. So we're going to show classroom settings and I'm going to go on to immutable world. Now I can do this with a slash command also, but sometimes we forget that. And it's really easy to just kind of click it with a flip of a switch. Keep in mind classroom mode also has a switch for that. So you can turn immutable world on and off there as well. And I'm going to come back into my game. So now the immutable world setting is on. And what immutable world means is that the world can't be built or broken by anyone who isn't an operator or isn't in world builder mode, I should say. So notice now I can't build in this world at all. I also can't break. If I try to mine the ground right here, it's not working. But these are allow blocks, which means I can build anywhere on top of these. Now, why would I want that? Well, I may have designed a really cool world, and I want my students to be able to build in that world, but only in a particular place. So I would make that world immutable and put down some allow blocks to put them in a place where they can only build or break or mine in that one designated area. They can't break anything else in my world which means anything that already exists is safe from my students. Deny blocks work the same way. Notice that I can't build here or here, but if a mutable world was off, and we're going to go back and turn that setting off. So let's go back into our settings and scroll down all the way down. Show classroom settings, turn that immutable world off. Now I've got kind of the opposite, right? I can build and mine 
anywhere I want, but I can't do it here. That means I could put these blocks under an existing structure in my world, and that structure would be safe. I could also put this in places where I don't want students to build at all, meaning they only have designated areas to build. So it really depends on, am I trying to protect specific structures but allow the world to be built, in which case I might use deny blocks underneath those things to keep them safe, or do I want to keep the world safe and only allow the students to build in certain areas, in which case I would use the allow blocks and turn my immutable world setting on so that my world is safe but they have this one specific place where they can build. So these are allow blocks and these are deny blocks and they do exactly what they say they do. Keep in mind, they extend infinitely upward. So even if I were to fly a thousand feet up and try to build on top of that area, I can't do it. Now, admittedly, there's nothing for me to build attached to, but you get the point, okay? So those are allow and deny blocks. You have to be in world builder mode to place them. Uh, and then of course, if I'm not in world builder mode, then they apply to me just like they apply to everybody else. These are border blocks and they sound exactly like, or they do exactly what they sound like. And that is they create a border. You know, you'll see this kind of red sparkle coming off of them. And what that tells you is you can't cross this, which means I can't get into that area at all. It is bordered off for me. Now, of course, if I want to get in there, I could get into world builder mode, set that to true, and now I'm in there. Of course, if I'm in here and I set world builder to false and I'm not the world builder anymore, I'm not in that God mode anymore, I am trapped inside here, which means you can create areas where your students have to stay or areas where your students can't go using these border blocks. And these extend infinitely upward. So if I fly up, really up, and try to fly out of there, I'm still stuck inside it. Same is true if I try to dig downward. And I'm falling through the earth. But notice, I'm gonna fly back up into that hole. Woo. I still can't leave this area. I am trapped within that border. And let's see if we can fly back up out of there. There we go. And we're back in our world. And we're going to go ahead and fill in that area so I don't keep falling through there. Because there is a catch, and I guarantee your students know this. If they've played Minecraft at all, there is a loophole that will allow them to get past border. Now, if you're a teacher, you don't want them to get past border. So you need to know what that loophole is. And that loophole is an object in their inventory called an ender pearl. So I'm going to type in the word ender, and you'll notice there's a bunch of ender stuff. Uh, but this one right here is the one I'm talking about. And it's called the ender pearl. And I'm going to put that in my inventory. Now what the ender pearl does is if I throw it, my body automatically teleports to wherever it lands. So I could hurl it way over there and notice I zipped outside the border block. I could throw it back in and get myself inside the border block. I could give it a great big heave and look how far out I've gone. It's way over there. So I've escaped even though the teacher was trying to keep me bordered in. Well, we don't want that to happen at all. Well, if you remember from the beginning of the video, I mentioned those slash commands, right? Where I could hit slash and I could type things like give and give an item to a particular group of students or to myself or to characters or to NPCs or whoever. I could also clear inventory, right? But I don't, as the teacher, want to be sitting in this room monitoring what they're doing. And every time I see someone with an ender pearl clearing out their inventory and saying, no, you can't have that, they're going to keep trying. So what if there was a way we could set it up so that no matter what, they couldn't get out of there, right? They couldn't get the ender pearl. It wouldn't even be available to them. Well, there is a way. And again, we need to be... Uh, the operator to make this happen. So I'm going to give myself an object. 
And the thing I'm going to give myself with this command, so I'm going to do give at s, which is myself, and I'm going to give myself something called a command block. Now, why am I doing this instead of going into the inventory? Well, as it turns out, this object isn't in the inventory. This is the only way you can give it to yourself. Now, keep in mind your students can't type these things if they don't have operator access, so they can't give themselves command blocks. So I'm going to give myself a command block. And you'll notice in my inventory, I now have this block right here. And what a command block does is exactly what it sounds like. Mm. I can tell it to give commands so that I don't have to keep typing it into the commander. Now that can happen when an action takes place. It can happen because we use redstone, which we'll probably talk about yeah. in another video, to activate it. Or we could set it to just keep doing that command forever so that those things never have the possibility of happening or always happen. So I'm going to place a command block in this world, and I'm going to do it outside that border because we're going to imagine that we want to keep our students bordered into an area. Now, it's probably not an area this small, but we might have sectioned off an area, and we want our students to work in that space so we can monitor them. We don't want them all over the planet. After all, these worlds are infinite. So I'm going to place one of these command blocks outside. And I'm going to right click on it. And when I right click on it, I get a menu. And you'll notice the very first thing here is a place where I can give that command block a name. Now we said we don't want our students to be able to get the ender pearl because the ender pearl is going to allow them to get past our border blocks. And we may use border blocks to create some place in our world where we don't want them to escape or we don't want them to get in. So we don't want them to have ender pearls at all. Okay, we can do that. So I'm going to name this block no ender pearl. Notice the next part says impulse. Now impulse is something that happens once. A chain is a series of command blocks that set each other off. So you can do linked commands or multiple commands. And then we have repeat, something that's just gonna happen over and over again infinitely. If you're familiar with computer science, we'd call this our forever loop. Um, and that's what we're gonna use. We want this command to keep happening so that no matter when they get the ender pearl, it's just gonna wipe it right out of their inventory. We're going to make this unconditional. So nothing has to happen for it to happen. We just never want them to have an ender pearl. Next, it says redstone. Now, redstone, for some of you who know this, is sort of like the circuitry that we can use in this game to make things happen. So we can use switches to activate things or buttons to activate things and so on, pressure plates. We don't need that for this one. We want it to just stay active, to always be powered on. We want it to execute on the first tick, the first second of the game, we want this to start. And we want no delay. We want this to just keep happening forever, all the time. So we've got our settings over here on the, on the left side. We're going to come over here to the command input on the right side. And this is where we're going to type our command. Now, if you don't know what commands to put in here, this is where I recommend getting out of the command block. In fact, I'll, I'll do this for you. And just hitting that slash command, because remember, it's going to auto populate. So if I say, oh, I want it to clear the ender pearl, but I know clear is the word, but then what do I type? Well, as I space it out, it says, right? So I want all players to lose their ender pearl. So I'm going to hit at A, because that tells me it's all players, and hit space. Now it gives me items in the inventory I can choose from. Well, I know it's called ender. And I know you can't see it because my camera's in the way, but it's telling me it's ender underscore pearl is the name of that object. Right? And that command's worked. Worked. You'll notice it says cleared the inventory of Eric S, removing 16 items. It removed 16 copies of the ender pearl. So I know my command. It's that same command I'm going to put in this block. And that was slash clear at all players. So at A. Ender pearl. And that's the command I want it to repeat forever. Now there's a few other things I can do in here. And keep in mind, I can use any command I want to do this and do things with those commands so that I don't have to type those commands. The world with these blocks is doing those commands for me anytime I want them to happen or only when they're triggered using things like redstone or possibly other million ways. But I want to start with this one 
Because if we're looking at classroom management, and that's what we're doing right here, and we want to use those border blocks effectively, every time we use border blocks, this is a command block we want to make sure we are using because it's going to stop the students from escaping that. Now, will they come up with other ways? It's a possibility. It's not the only way to escape it, but it's definitely the easiest. So we're going to go ahead and close that. And you'll notice now that there's a command there, my block has a name when I hover over it, no ender pearl, and it's changed colors, telling me that it's active, right? And you saw that it even told me that a command was set. Now, I can't get back in that border because I'm not in world builder mode. So we're going to go back into world builder mode. I'm going to put myself right back inside that border as if I was a student in here. I'm going to leave world builder mode. So now this border block affects me just like it will my students, right? Can't get through it anymore. Ah, but I know I'm a clever student. I'm going to grab that ender pearl, put it in my inventory and throw it outside so I can escape from the border block. Sounds good. I'm going to grab that ender. I'm, I'm going to grab, I'm going to, yeah, I can't grab it anymore. I can't even put it in my inventory. As soon as I start to drag it, it deletes it right from my mouse cursor. I can try this forever, and I can never get it down to my inventory. And even if I did, it would clear out of my inventory, which basically makes the ender pearl completely defunct for this world, as long as that command block is in there and running. And again, if my students are joining as members, if they're joining as visitors, they can't mess with that command block. That is mine. That's the operators. And if I put it outside my border, they can't even get to it. It's not a bad idea to hide it somewhere where they can't even see it. All right. So just as a refresher, and of course, right now, I cannot fly out of here. We did cover a few things. We covered border block and the command block which are these two right here. Keep in mind and remind yourself that to get that command block, you do have to use the slash commands. You won't find it in your inventory and you've got to give yourself that command block, underscore block. It's the only way you're gonna put that command block in your inventory. To build with any of the deny blocks, the allow blocks or the border blocks, you do have to be in world builder mode and that will allow me to build with those things. Of course, the deny blocks do exactly what they sound like. They deny me from building in that area. The allow blocks allow me to build in that area. And that's basically all there is to it. All right, so thanks for tuning in to another video. Uh, I will put a survey in our group and see what you're interested in learning next or need a refresher on next. Uh, and I really, really, really appreciate you all watching, and thanks for tuning in.